Hey everybody, I figured today we'd take a look at the Photoshop process, the, the post-processing process, the fixing errors, getting new ideas, refinement, all that stuff that happens when you're done with your 3D renders. Um, I have this um, truck model here that I've been uh, modeling, having a lot of fun with, and this render sort of just happened. I, I fell into it almost by accident. So actually it, it also includes a bunch of processes that I would advise against and I, you know, therefore the title. Um, and uh, I think we just go through that and uh, look at some of the pros and cons of, of this process and sort of enjoy the journey um, together. Yeah. Oh, by the way, check this out. <laughs> Got some cool nerdy t-shirts for you guys if you're interested. Anyway, check technomo.net if you're interested. Let's check it out. So here we are in Photoshop with the raw render. I used Nishita Sky Texture and um, it came out looking like it did. I The first thing I did was cut out the sky and sort of desaturate it a little bit to get a more, mm, let's say, moody ambiance. Um, really play with, with the tonality of the image up front just to get the, the, the right sort of immediate flavor to it. And one of the first things I did here was add some shadows behind these wheels. and. Without really much planning, I start just adding details to where I think it would be beneficial. Some of these uh, metal scrapes come out a little bright, so I darken them and add some handles. And you can see I'm just letting my eye guide me. You know, runny, runny goop and extra rust and everything. Probably, it's almost like a warm-up exercise, right? Um, and I noticed that the, the tires look quite clean. Um, it's something that I've been, that's been commented on in the in the process of this uh, this truck here and i decide to to muck them up a little bit also to get rid of some of the the cleanliness i i just sloppily paint on top i'm one of those people who prefer concept art when it's a little bit more rough around the edges a little more painterly and a little bit more expressive so even though this is a super crisp and super clean 3d render i try and add a bit of chaotic detail to it you can see i add a reflection down here uh, so I gotta remember to copy all the details into the puddles, uh, obviously. And so again, just letting the eye uh, guide me and I add detail. Ooh, the chain, yeah. Not even doing a brush for that, just drawing it, raw dogging it like like, like old school. Um, and you can see here, I visit uh, unsplash.com and I get some photography here from an account called Neom. And I get some of these um, Arabian mountains and I plop them in just to see if they can create so, uh, a, a background that I find interesting. Um, just copy and scale, you know, pretty simply put them in the background, make sure they have reflection in the in the water puddles as well. It's sort of a, a framing of, of the scene. Um, you can see I'm looking at some cool images from Moitapa Motas, Casey Horner and Gianmarco Boscaro, I think, Dan Carlson as well. Getting some of this photography in here, and um, I figured some clouds would be good on this particular uh, sky here. And oh <laughs> yeah, um, oh my god! Again, that's the lack of planning, right? If this was planned well, I would have rendered it out in layers, obviously, so the ship was cut from the background. Now I have to outline that by hand, like a like a silly bird. Um, regardless, you know, I think forward momentum sometimes can be the way to go over careful planning and usually I argue that that's the case but I would say here the time I spent on this concept probably would have been better spent if I had done a little bit more planning up front regardless here I am cutting out things by hand like a doofus all right cool so making sure that they're there that the background isn't interfering with the foreground using simple um, masks uh, and really focusing on getting the values right first right the, the brightness and darkness and Everything you can see, I'm painting in some of that green shadow in the in the in the reflection as well. One of the things I accidentally got from doing this photo bash here was got, I got some green into the sky over on the right hand side, which I think looks really interesting. You can see I'm trying to replicate some of that uh, darkness over there on the left hand side as well with the cloud. Already adding glow again. I'm working big picture first and then into the details. So I'm trying to get a sense of the atmospherics and the brightness and the contrast of the scene as a whole always flipping back and forth between 
original render and where I am currently to check if I'm if I've gone mental in the in the meantime. And I decide to step into the background and paint some some windows in these uh, anvil cliffs um, again to get to that sort of adventurous flavor um, from from uh, science fiction of, of of the olden days, I would say. Again, back to the flares for some reason. That's a little silly, isn't it? Anyway, doing this work, scaling and making a sense of a encampment or a city uh, out in the distance. I'm envisioning this as a retrieval scene where the truck and the crew are looking for something out here in the marshlands and maybe it's a crash retreat. More cutouts. I, I really do apologize. That's ridiculous. But the good thing is that Photoshop can support that workflow. So Photoshop can support you not knowing what you want to do, which is pretty good. So I get, I get by, but again, not recommended. I envision this scene as, envision this scene as a, as a retrieval uh, scenario, either from a war zone or maybe a, a previous war decades ago or a crash site of some sort. So I want to have it be desolate, but at the same time, I want to, in the background, I want to indicate that there are uh, humans around. So here you can see I'm comparing the cloudless version with the with the cloudy version just to check again to check back that the detailing is something that benefits the scene or not so what i'm doing here is looking into the raw filter mode and playing with colors and contrast and all kinds of things to get the the most contrast I'm, i basically take a slider and yank it back and forth and i and see if it appeals to me it's not really planned it's not re i don't really know what i'm looking for um to get that cinematic photographic feel to the scene you can see i'm you doing that in a layer of its own and then I'm uh, 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 erasing where I don't want it to be where I'm, I want the contrast of the old file. Obviously we have puddles here so I have to fake the, the water reflection and I use, a, I use a smudge brush of some sort to, to get that effect. Uh, the scene is lit almost entirely by the glare and the reflection of the big spotlight lighting the, the guy there on the left and it gives the, 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 the truck itself this interesting um, flashlight lit. It's almost like it's lit. It's lit from where the camera is positioned. And I accentuate that with this airbrush here. Uh, color, dodge, or effect, or whatever I'm doing. And it, you know, I, I can really highlight both the shape of the, of the truck and different little edges there. And I check back and forth. You can see here I'm just checking. And I think it sets the object in the scene with, with quite a high level of photorealism. Of course, the good old hand-painted lens flare, you know, the old staple of airbrush <laughs> art from the past. Um, and again, diving back into the background and adding smoke from, let's say, more, uh, maybe a more uh, simpler civilization uh, out here. Obviously, the, the smoke is pointing into the scene, so it, it ac accents the, the composition. And here I'm adding some hovercrafts in the distance and some some cables and, and different little tiny details on the on the crane here. One of the funny things about this is I had to add chromatic aberration to the effect because the render comes out with, with quite a bit of that. So like a little bit of rainbow and out of focusness. So I had to fake that here on these objects. As you can see, the pieces that are rendered, they are actually, they have that red and green haloing around them. I had to fake that on these cables. So again, if you think outside the box, you can you can you can work uh, into the render, looking at a bit of a adjustment to the overall composition. And I realize I I need I need more I need more width to the to the scene. So I stretch the image like this, really rug and roll. And you can see that's not good for noise and things like that. So there are some problems there I have to solve. Where again, a lack of planning on the compositorial front means I'm in trouble from a rendering point of view now, and I had to paint out the noise. That's stupid, painting England up there. But the upside to that is that you get a chance to make it a bit more dirty and painterly. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. And sometimes the errors you make and the bad judgment calls in planning and process earlier uh, might give the image some character. So back onto the water, um, painting some soft waves into this, uh, this space here and uh, some highlights on, on sort of a soft motion of, of this water. 
I look at this, I feel like, yeah, again, lack of planning. I feel like there is an option and an opportunity to make a stronger composition. So I jump back into Blender 3D and I want to have some stuff down there in that third uh, or sort of like the, the, the bottom uh, right quadrant of the image. And I find objects from my Gribble pack and I place them in there because I feel like it's a good place to have some more of that uh, industrial junk um, to make the scene a bit more interesting. So again, you can see how they are pointed at the lamp and at the truck. And here I'm um, then re-adjusting uh, the light source so that it will shine a bit on that as well, these new objects, to give the scene a bit more complexity. You can see, as long as the light source is relatively close to the, the actual lamp, it's, it's fine. It doesn't have to be super precise. I have to have it hit the, the guy over there on the left and hit some of that stuff on the on the right as well to make the scene, to give it that discoverability that your eye can sort of wander in and wonder what the hell is going on in the scene. Let's make some render settings. Need a bit more junk and a bit more stuff. So I find some more stuff in the, in the creeples, place them in and around. And I imagine this being marsh marshland, so I don't have to worry too much about mud and water. What, what's what? Everything is sort of flattened out and gets sploppy. In a sense, actually, the guy probably couldn't even stand on it, but you know. I figure I'll make do. But place a bunch of junk there to, to give it some visual interest. Steal that from the render. You can see how off the color is. So the first thing I have to do is ensure that the color space and the sort of contrast and, and color of the of the new thing is matches the 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 render we have so far, or the, the Photoshop file we have so far. You can see doing a bunch of color adjustments and then simply erasing and uh, masking out the parts I don't uh, want from the from the new take. And there's no science to this. I simply erase it like I feel like what what, what looks the what looks the best really. And here I realize I should have spent more time on the earth and the dirt. I really should. But again, you know, get on with it. So I, I, I highlight and paint shadows in on little blobs and rocks and nodules that would be sticking up of this particular sloppy marshland here. Just to foundation the, the objects and the light in the scene to make it more credible. Soften some of these shadows. I realized I wasn't entirely happy with the render. Going in and painting some highlights on these objects to give it a little bit more catch to the eye, so to speak. But also to make the scene a bit more mushy and painterly and a bit more expressive than it otherwise would have been. The render is quite clean and, and quite um, precise on this. It's almost like an old school um, uh, ray casting render from, from back in the day. You gotta add a bit of a flying craft in the background. You gotta have that because it's the best. And so what I'm doing here is I'm black and whiting the image and then I go into the same camera raw adjustment and adjust the contrast and I use a I use that layer as a luminosity overlay and oftentimes what I find is that the contrast you dare giving it when it's black and white will teach you a, a lot you will see the image you have just made in a new way when you apply the luminosity filter you can then collapse it when you like it and you will find that you oftentimes there's a lot more contrast so here is the on to the, to the last problem. As I was finalizing this image and adding uh, side mirrors and details on the tires and stuff like that, I realized that why not just do a shader for the water part of the image that has a bit of a wave in there? Yeah? No? All right. Help with the kitchen needed. I'll come back. Yeah, so re-rendering the, the water parts of it, blending it back to the scene, cut, doing the same color adjustments as we saw before, and simply masking out and erasing the, the parts that we don't want. I mask out the entirety of the image, and then I come back and mask in the new water with the new waves. It gives a little bit more credibility to the chaos of the soft waves of the reflection there. So 
And that's what I mean with the with the lack of a thought out process. I was just doing a quick turnaround video that turned into a, a 2D render. Just a little more organic cut out to the to the rock surface in the background. And then a final mistake I found. So that's really where the image started. Uh, pretty raw, pretty old school, and then this is where the image ended with more atmospheric, more cinematic, more uh, lived-in uh, expression. So that's the process of that image. So again, I hope you had some takeaways with some do's and some don'ts. Obviously, I would always say, go ahead, do it, have some fun, roll ahead. But at the same time, obviously, sometimes stuff can go wrong and you should have done a better plan. So that's it.